Welcome to the channel. My name is Kyle Watson and I will be your host. First up, we're going to be going to Motor City Comic Con. We're meeting with three different cosplayers. Follow them for a day on the convention floor and see what their lives are like. With no further ado, let's see our first cosplayer. My name is Lori. My cosplay name is Lori Lunara. I'm 31. Uh, during the day, I'm an SEO specialist and cosplaying is my hobby. So I work on websites and try to uh, boost their visibility and search engine for the results. Um, so I work at an ad agency and I do SEO for certain clients. It's pretty fun. Um, I'm trying to kind of use that and, and practice my skills with Instagram because they have their own algorithm and anytime there's a search algorithm, there's some kind of SEO involved. Um, that's just another wrinkle, to, I guess, to cosplay. With the business account for uh, Instagram, you can like see all the analytics and like I have to have that. I love seeing the data. So I'm more of like a math, science, numbers, analytical person. So this hobby is, it really takes my brain and just puts it on another channel. It's, it's pretty relaxing. It's challenging at times because I wouldn't say I'm artistically inclined, but I like problem solving. I like figuring things out and there's a lot of that doing, I'm making cosplays. I moved here from Virginia when I was 17 to go to school and I've been here since. Um, I used to live in Ann Arbor and now I moved here to Royal Oak and I feel like it's where the action is. Uh, I really like it here. I studied research psychology but um, it's hard to get a job after college so I ended up doing SEO and I'm really glad that I found that because otherwise I'd probably still be in school. They moved, actually my parents moved up here because my dad loves Ann Arbor, so they moved up here after they retired. They're older, they don't really understand cosplay. My mom keeps asking me, she's like, why do you make money doing that? And I don't think she understands, it's, it's like a hobby. So I was um, trying to tell her about a convention that I went to, C2E2, it was huge. It was in Chicago a couple weekends ago. And um, she asked if it was like a baseball game, everybody getting drunk and having a good time. No, mom, it's, it's not like a baseball game at all. It's, it's people that have made things or put things together and then they all come to one place to show that. And that's, that's just the cosplay side. There's also people that, you know, like tabletop games or they like comic books or anime and different cons have different things. Some have all of them. There's, really something for everyone. And even being a spectator, you don't have to cosplay. Some people just like to see the other cosplayers. I, I do too. Um, being at a con is, I think, like the pinnacle, that's like the goal that you aim for is you're always preparing for the next con or the next like out of con photo shoot. But um, there's a few cons in Michigan that it, especially Yumacon, that was the first convention I ever went to. So coming back to it last year, I felt like it was kind of homecoming and a lot of my friends were there and um, I don't know, I just, I'm excited for next month. I'm going to two cons again. I went to two cons last month. This month I'm kind of taking a break from it. Um, but yeah, I would recommend for anybody to go to a convention. Super fun. And fun fact, during my Elsa shoot in the snow, I had pudding under my chin the whole time because I was eating it really fast, getting ready. And I didn't realize it until like, there, there's only one picture that you can tell. You could actually see the pudding like, in the shot though. If you zoomed in and, but. There, were some, there was some debris. Yeah, I just like pounding pudding cups. <laughs> it was like a hectic morning, so. So this is my cosplay room, my wig stand. I think that's like the first thing you see when you come in. So these are my wigs. I try to put them on here so I can kind of see where they're at and the lace fronts are really delicate so I try to put them on the foam heads. But this I wore like a few weekends ago. I was Chitara. Um, trying to dip dye Harley to be a little bit more screen accurate because um, before I was using my own hair but I cut it off so I could put it in wig caps to wear these um, without like the alien hair bulge in the back. So I have my Goblin King, I have Elsa and Ivy. Um, I have other wigs, but I keep them in bags because I don't know, cosplayers just have so many wigs. Um, so projects that I've made, this is the first thing that I made that was 100% made by me. 
So it's Dorpunzel. It's a combination of Rapunzel and Dorothy. Um, I had a photo shoot that was part of like a wedding package that I, I never used. So I thought, well, it was supposed to be me in a dress, so it was me in a dress, but I got to wear this. And somewhere around here, I made ruby slippers, but they were purple. And I tried to pull as much Rapunzel in it as possible. Um, but I, that was really fun to make. It, it took me a really long time and all weekend, Memorial Day weekend last year. So this is Sailor Neptune. But when it came, because um, I, I ordered this, this I didn't make, the fabric for the skirt and the bib um, it just looked really dull. It just, the light didn't really reflect on it. It was, it was kind of like this fabric and I just couldn't stand the fabric. So uh, I wanted to go with more of a jewel tone, especially because of the new animation Sailor Moon Crystal. I think the colors are more vibrant. So um, I want to do more Sailor Scouts, but I, we'll get the costume and then replace some of the fabric. So, so far I've done Venus, Neptune, Uranus, and Chibi Moon will be next. Um, and then this is another pride and joy and probably something that became my main cosplay somehow. So this is Poison Ivy. This was super fun to make because um, the, the leaves all came on vines. So I cut them off individually and then I glued it to this lovely bodysuit. So I made the bodysuit. I sewed together a bra and just like a regular um, kind of unitard, I guess. And then it, it was difficult to do because I don't have a mannequin or anything. So I kind of just put it on a cardboard box that had similar dimensions. So it stretched it out and yeah, glued individual leaves on. The whole project took me 40 hours and I made a purse for it. This is my only cosplay that has a purse because I just thought it'd be weird walking around at cons with like a regular purse. I made her shoes. These are leg wraps and she has gloves too. Um, this is something that I, I'm really happy how it turned out. And I've ended up wearing it way more than I thought I would um, because some of my friends, they do other Gotham cosplays. So we've done Harley and Ivy and Red Hood and we're supposed to do Gotham Sirens uh, next month. So we'll get a Catwoman to do that. So this is my Harley cosplay. I would say this has to do a lot with why I started cosplaying. Um, the year before I started, I wore this for Halloween and even before I was cosplaying, I would start preparing for Halloween months in advance. So I was accumulating all of her little things from the movie and because um, I just wanted to do the best job that I could. And she has so many accessories. So this I wore for Halloween and then I've worn it a few other times for photo shoots and I've added some more details like I painted the collar to be gold like in the movie added some of the stitching. So I don't always make my own things, but I, I do like to edit them as much as possible to make them like accurate the way that I want. This is one of my next projects. So this is um, season seven Daenerys cosplay. Um, it's when she gets to Dragonstone and there's a really emotional scene where she kind of bends over and she touches the sand because she's home. Um, and that made me really emotional because it reminds me when I go back home to the DC area, um, I just get really nostalgic and like happy. So I'm working on that. Uh, the pants that came with it are enormous. The rest of it fits okay, but I'll definitely edit the pants to make them as, as good as possible. So the last thing I'll show you is um, my Elsa cosplay. Elsa, it's a cosplay I really wanted to do. I just didn't want to do um, a version I wasn't proud of. And I've had the Halloween costume, which I think is back here. And I wore that to work, I think it was 2017. And we had kids come through and it was so exciting pretending to be her and just, I don't know, seeing the light in their eyes, getting all excited that they really, you know, believe for that moment that you're Elsa. Um, it made me realize like, I, I want to do that too. I want to have my own kind of selfish cosplays that I want to do. But Elsa is one that, um, I don't know, I think kids really enjoy. And I've joined a charity group that does events and they dress like superheroes and princesses and Elsa is my cosplay for that. So a few weeks ago, I got to read at a elementary school as Elsa. And then I think a weekend later, I went to a mini convention with the charity group and was also there too. So I'm still practicing. I'm not as good in character. I just kind of go by what I think like a Disney World princess would do. Um, but it's definitely been fun and 
just, I don't know, live in the fantasy on that one. So I wanted to show you guys um, what's one of the biggest things I do is just edit stuff I already have or I get online. Um, so these are the season seven Daenerys Dragonstone pants that go with her cosplay and they're enormous. So I'm gonna show you how I edit them. Okay, so these are the pants. And yeah, there's just some parts of it that really don't fit well. Um, so all I really do is just, I turn them inside out. I figure out how I want them to fit. So for example, let's see. Yeah, they don't fit in a lot of places. So if this part's a little bit too big, I just kind of clip it where I want the seams to be so that it fits me. I don't know, knees are always really baggy and the bottom looks really, really baggy. So yeah, I just clip it down the sides and then I take it off and um, just kind of sew it to make a new seam. So once I turn it inside out and I have the clips on it, I kind of it's like my guide of where I want to sew it. Um, oh, I need to thread my machine. Yay! Okay, so yeah, now that I have it clipped, um, I'm just gonna kind of sew the seam uh, a little tighter. So I'm thinking I'm gonna make it smaller by about a half inch. So I just kind of put it, it has a guide on the side. It's like a ruler that shows you where to do it. So I go through and I do all of the pants. You kind of just sew all the way through the crotch and on both sides. And then you end up with a pair of pants that fits a lot better. Lori, you look great. Thank you. A lot better than Daenerys did after crossing that giant ass desert. Very true. Uh, gotta admit, I feel a little underdressed at this point. Do you have anything I could throw on? Well, Lori, thank you so much for being the first guest on the channel. I can't take you seriously right now. I do not blame you whatsoever. <laughs> so, what are the what are your favorite passions? What are your favorite fandoms? Um, so I really like Game of Thrones, which is, you know, super, like, I guess relevant right now. I love Lord of the Rings, um, pretty much any superhero stuff, DC, Marvel, I like all of it. I'm really excited to see the Avengers in a couple weeks. Um, I guess, I mean, I'm into Dungeons and Dragons too. I don't know if that's like a fandom, but that's actually how I got my cosplay name. It was uh, my first character, Laura Lunara, is a moon elf wizard, neutral good and um, I ended up doing a cosplay for her. And then when I started cosplaying, I thought, oh, maybe I need a name, and I already really liked that one. Um, I used to be called Laura when somebody would get me my name wrong, so I kinda, I embraced that through my cosplay name, and now people call me Laura, and I'm like, what? At like cons or something, hey, Laura, and I have no idea who they're talking to, and then I realized it's me. Funny that you bring up Dungeons and Dragons because we have to do a saving throw to end the interview. Ooh. and. You roll a one, something really terrible happens, and 20 something great happens, and everything else is just in between. So, you dress up as Disney princesses. You've done that with the League of Enchantment, mm -hmm. uh, read to some kids. Who is your favorite Disney princess? <sighs> this is really tough. I mean, I guess I identify a lot with Elsa. She went through such a transformation to kind of figure out who she was, and it was a lot of be really cheesy letting go. So I, I really like Rapunzel too and I guess growing up a lot of the time I didn't like the princess. I liked the you know male character more so I mean as much as I like Jasmine, Aladdin was my fa favorite character and I guess I'd be more inclined to want to cosplay him versus Jasmine. But I think recently Disney has been giving um, female characters more of 
like a heroic vibe and more character development. So I think that's why Elsa was so great is they really made her a main character with a, a soul and a brain and feelings and all of that. So who is the worst Disney princess? Oh gosh, um, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Um, my sister, I hate to say this, my middle sister's favorite character is Aurora. I, I brought her up. Um, she's not my favorite. I feel like she kind of sings in the woods and takes a nap and uh, I just like to see more out of a princess. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of meat there. I think, uh, Prince Charming kind of swooped in to save the day for that one. Yeah, I think a lot of the earlier princesses, it was more about like, you know, singing beautifully and just, you know, kind of the elegance. And I like how some of the, the newer princesses, they have more grit. Um, they're rough around the edges, which is, I, I can relate to that a lot more. So we're going with Aurora, hands down. Yeah, First I'm princess. sorry, Amy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, now Game of Thrones is coming out tomorrow, the new season. What are your predictions for the season? Who is going to die first? I don't, it's hard to speculate. All I know is I've detached myself from any outcome. I just want to take the stance that I watch it and I enjoy it. I would like to see Danny on the throne, obviously. Um, I want to see her live. I want to see her end up with Gendry, but um, I don't know. I guess some of the fan fiction that I read, spoilers, are yet to be shown characters that might end up on the throne. But if it, it were written by me, developed by me, it, I was the HBO showrunner, it would be Khaleesi all the way. So you mentioned seeing Daenerys with Gendry? Yeah, um, I like Jon Snow and everything, but I think Gendry is, you know, really hot and I'd rather see them together and he's technically heir to the throne also. That's true. And it's funny that you mention that because I did want to ask you about some Game of Thrones pairings and see who you think should be together. Okay. Who makes the better couple, Brienne and Tormund or Brienne and Jaime? Uh, I gotta say Tormund, just because he's already so after her, he's like salivating and growling and Arr. it's really fun to watch that, you know, big woman and um, I'd really like to see them together. I kind of want Jamie and Cersei to die together. Really? Even Jamie, you still, still, still yeah. can't let go of a crippling brand? I think that the Lannisters just need to be wiped out. Okay, yeah. on, to the, on to the second one. John and Daenerys, or John and Ygritte? Uh, I never really liked Ygritte. I guess, yeah, her, him and Daenerys, because that's kind of the books. It's a, you know, fire and ice. It's, yeah, I'd like to see John and Danny as much as I want her with Gendry. It's not realistic. And I think with them, it's, it's fate. You know, they come from two different continents and they're, you know, end up related, they end up together, and they're two really powerful leaders that have a better vision for that world than, you know, Cersei would, and whoever has been in on the throne in the past, including Daenerys' dad. So I just think that they would make great rulers together, and maybe they could just widen the throne and they both sit on it, I don't know. The iron, uh, the iron sofa? Yeah, the iron sofa, exactly. <laughs> All right, the next coupling. Gendry and Arya, or Gendry and Jon? Whoa, Gendry and Jon. Gendry no and Jon. Nope. No hesitation? No. Arya, I don't think she's at the romantic spot yet. She's really just, she's more of a warrior, and I don't think she's matured to that point where she even really has feelings like that. I mean, I guess if she did, it would be Gendry. Yeah, I think John and Gendry would be interesting because it's like the ultimate fan fiction. <laughs> I mean, fan fiction can be anything, even stuff that grosses people out. If it's like siblings, I've seen a cosplay of uh, Ray and Kylo, like making out by a bonfire, loved it. It's just cosplay, you can do whatever you want. Fan fiction, you can do whatever you want. There's no rules. It's I think we're yeah. experiencing that right now. You're only limited by your own creativity. All right. Pod and Brienne. Or Pod and the three brothel workers. Three brothel workers. 
I think he needs more than one woman. Even though Brienne is more than one woman. Follow up, <laughs> what do you think Pod did there? In that room with those three women? Oh gosh, I don't know if there's children watching this, so. Um, yeah, all I know is good for him. You know, <laughs> he's getting some experience and who knows, maybe one day he'll be ready to take on Brienne. She is quite the woman. Yeah. She'd be the handful for She's her. actually my dad's favorite character. My dad has a crush on Brienne. If you could bring back one dead character, if you could stare George R. R. Martin in the eyes and tell him to resurrect somebody in the final book, who would it be? I guess Elena Tyrell. Oh. I mean, she's just so fun to watch, and I felt like there's more that she could have had her hand in, because there's a lot of side characters that I don't know if they really have the ambitions to be on the throne. They just want to be a part of the action and still have some kind of power. Um, kind of like Varys. All right, well, let's do the saving throw and we can okay. get you out of this interview and get you into some different clothes. Eight. But I have a plus five charisma modifier. Oh, this is a natural roll, I'm afraid. Oh, dang. Looks like we're gonna call your mom. Oh gosh, okay, we can do that. And we'll get your mom in on the interview. Uh, oops. Hey. Hi, mom. Hi. What? Hi, Mrs. Pettibone. My name is Kyle Watson. I'm doing an interview with your daughter about her cosplay for YouTube right now. About a what? About her cosplay, the outfits she wears for oh. the different characters. Yeah, she's doing, a, doing an interview for YouTube. And I know you're really impressed with my cosplays, so I thought you'd be a great person to chat with. So, so how have you, what did you first think when uh, you realized your daughter was putting on these outfits all the time? Well, I was happy. She was uh, sewing and, uh, you know, making them herself. That was impressive. Is that something you passed on to her, the sewing talents? Well, I hope so. Her sewing machine. I have her sewing machine. Yeah, that's oh. right. I gave her the sewing machine. So she's been an accomplice pretty much the whole time then, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have oh. you always been supportive of her uh, of her outfits? Were there any you didn't disapprove you didn't approve of? Well, I can't say I, you know, mother's gonna like the skates ones, you know. That, <laughs> she was you younger and we could go shopping at um, what's that place? Uh, yeah, any mother does not want their daughter dressing like a hooker. Oh, BB. BB, yeah. I said that was not a good place to buy your clothes. Well, I, I try not to do all the scuzzy ones, you know. You know I'm, she's doing charity work now, right? That's true, yes. Yes, fully clothed. Well, we appreciate you talking to us for a few minutes and saying hi. Yeah, thank you, Mom. Okay, well, good luck. Thanks, Mom. Bye. All right, bye. Lori, thank you so much for uh, being on the show, inviting us in, giving us a look around your place, at all your awesome cosplay. Uh, where could people see you at coming up? Um, I'll be at Motor City Comic Con in May, and then Colossal Con, maybe, uh, probably Michigan Comic Con and Yoma Con. Who knows? Maybe more cons than that. And I'm on Instagram, Lori Lunara. I'm also on Facebook if you want to come and kind of see what I've been up to. All right, well. We're going to be going to Comic-Con, Motor City Comic-Con, with uh, Laura Lunara and following her for a day on the floor. So if you don't happen to see her there, check back for the video. We've also got interviews with other cosplayers coming up. So, If you like what you see, please subscribe. We've got new interviews and videos coming roughly every other week with cool people and awesome events. So stay tuned. We'll see you next time.